All right. So we've, by the way, we've talked about all sorts of transistors and you're doing vacuum tubes and all those things. I thought I'd show you another thing that may have some in interesting implications for the way we thought about it. So this is a little kind of really fun nugget. It's really not central to the course, but I thought it's good to talk about this. So have you heard of Kelvin generator, electrostatic generator? Has anyone heard of that? So this was actually a very, pretty fascinating thing for me the first time I saw it. So this is the way it kind of looks like. And if you look it up online, you can find various implementations of that. So you have a, let's say, a jar or, or bottle of water. And you usually kind of like add something like salt to it to make it conductive. So there are two spigots or two holes or something like that where the water comes out. So let's say there are two valves. And then there's a stream of water coming out. So there's water coming out of this thing. So there's a stream of water. And as it goes down, and at some point it just breaks into droplets, as it accelerates, obviously. And then it falls into two containers. And these are conductive containers. So they, these conductive con containers contain some water already, obviously, because they've been filling up. And then on top of that, now you have two cylinders, hollow cylinders, not touching the water, just the water is going through them. More like here and here that are connected like this. So there's two hollow metal connectors or conductive connectors, and they're connected like this. And on top of that, of course, then there is some point where these two, there are two little metal balls connected like that, and the water is dripping. And every so often, you see a little spark, a little arc between these things. That's all. That's all there is. And, and you can actually make one. It's fun to make. So what is happening? What's happening with this? Can someone propose why there is some arcing and electrostatic buildup? Obviously, one side becomes charged, and the other side becomes opposite, charged in the opposite direction. And what is happening? Any thoughts? Why do we have electrostatic charge buildup when something like this happens? Yes? Yes, but what is the reaction? So, so it's, it's a purely electrostatic behavior, right? You're, you're right in the sense that, but what, what, how does it start? How does it begin? Why is there some charge build up? Because really there are two terminals, right? It's this, these guys and these guys. They're connected to each other, right? So think about it this way. So let's say there's some fluctuation in charge, some minuscule noise fluctuation, instantaneous fluctuation in charge. So let's say this side gets slightly positively charged, and this side gets slightly negatively charged. Right? What's going to happen? So let's say there's a little bit of a positive charge here. So what would it do? Through this tank of water, these are connected through the water, right? So this will attract negative charge here and, I guess, positive charge here, right? A little bit. As the water is going through this tube, it will attract the positive charge here and negative charge here. Now, what happens? Part of this positive charge will end up in these droplets that have detached and will end up in this bucket. And part of this negative charge will end up in these droplets and end up in this bucket. So this bucket becomes more negatively charged. This one becomes more positively charged, which will enhance this process, because now this is more positively charged, so it attracts more negative charge, and likewise here. And we keep, it keeps going on and on, until you build up so much charge that you basically just create an arc, and you break the, you exceed the maximum electric field that the air can handle, and you discharge, and next time you build up. And it may build up this way, or may build up the other direction. It may, next time, it may be the, the, the polarity may have changed. So, Obviously, this is an example of positive feedback when we talk about feedback. But 
there's something else here that, that there's a reason I mentioned this to you. What do these look like to you? What do these remind you of, let's say? FETs, yeah, FET transistors, exactly, right? They're field effect transistors too. Because you're applying electric field, you're controlling the channel charge, and then you have a little bit of a pinch off here, because your water, uh, water droplets have separated, and now you basically accumulate charge. So you've basically made some sort of a positive feedback amplification system, and where's the energy? Where's the bias for it? Where's the energy coming from? In a regular circuit, the energy is coming from DC terminal, the, the supplies, right? Here, where is it coming from? Where's the battery? Gravity. I call this a fun fet. Anyway, so there are different field effect concepts. You can see a lot of different places. This is a fun example of how that field effect. And this, by the way, is very similar when we talk about this to this block diagram that you will actually do a homework problem on, which you can see shows a negative resistance. So this looks like that. This is very similar to that conceptually and operationally. All right? Very good. 